This week I thought I'd talk about another kind of concept, something that interests me, that people go on a lot about in philosophy particularly, and that is the truth. Now I'm not going to tell you the truth, like, um, in a kind of, well I'm not even going to tell it to you actually. Um, no, I mean I'm not going to tell you because I don't like preaching, and I don't profess at all to have all the answers, like say, um, the Austrian philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein when he wrote his book that I actually have a copy of here called Tractatus Logico Philosophus, Philosophus, and he suggested that he had every answer to all philosophical problems in the book, which he later retracted, of course, changed his mind. But, and actually thinking of Ludwig Wittgenstein, another thing he said uh, is, I think it's at the beginning of this book, that, and, well, without getting the words exact, that which we cannot speak of, we must pass over in silence. And uh, personally, I don't buy into that at all. I think you'll probably notice. I think that's putting boredom up on a pedestal. Uh, I prefer to uh, fumigate my house for boredom when I go on holiday, and I just detest boredom. I tend to talk more about what I can't talk about than what I think I can talk about because I think it's far more interesting. And you get funny looks from people and they say, like this chap said to me the other day, uh, he asked me if I'm on drugs and I said no. He said, well then perhaps you, you might start, you know, trying that. <laughs> I said, not a bad idea. And what would happen if I took drugs anyway? I might get out life insurance and start saving for a pension and start actually buying a house rather than talking about one or something and wearing a tweed cap or something like that. I don't know. It'd be an interesting experiment, wouldn't it? Anyway, um, blimey, I was going on about the philosopher. Right, this is what I worked out today, just something, another sort of metaphor. This is about the truth. Where is the truth, you know, and how do we come across it? Right, we'll take this example. You're looking at me now and, um, what I'm suggesting is that what you're observing is the truth, right? Now, you can't tell me the truth, you can only observe it. Because if you try and tell me the truth, that's not really the truth, it's just the description of the truth, you see? Because if you look at this, right, and say, this is a book. That is a description of the truth. It is a, a book, you know. Come on. Um, but that's a description of the truth. The truth is just what you observe, just what you're seeing. To say this is a book is a description of the truth. So, same with me. You're, you're looking at me now. The truth is what you see. To say that I'm sitting is describing what you're seeing. Right? And even to say, point of the same book is still describing what you're seeing. So it's describing the truth. Right. Now, the thing is, because of words, right, and remember, remember I'm kind of separating what you're looking at from words and, and doing this. <coughs> now, because of the influence of words, we have this kind of metaphorical uh, layer of cellophane in front of me, so that when you look at me, you don't just see what you are seeing. This um, metaphorical layer of cellophane that's right here is made up of words. And the thing is, there could be any words. Most probably, it's made up at the moment of the words, and remember, we're concentrating on what I'm doing, as in I'm sitting, right? So most probably the layer of cellophane at the moment is in words saying, I am sitting, right? But uh, who knows, because I don't know what's going on in your head at all, and I don't know... I mean, maybe you're Spanish, for example, and you know a bit of English, you say, you know, I am, or he is sitting, right? But you, you think that the word sitting is jumping, so you say, he is jumping. And I'm not. But you could be doing that, you see. I don't know. So you could be lying. You could you could be tricking, you know, you could be saying, I am jumping. 
when I'm not. You see? Or you could be saying I'm sitting. So <clears throat> you could say anything from the absolute truth, right, without being tricky, meaning the that I am sitting, to the absolute non-truth, which could be anything. You know, I'm jumping, I'm swimming, anything that that is not sitting. It could be anything in between either as well. It could be saying I'm slightly sitting, slightly jumping, or whatever. But <coughs> you've got the potentiality for absolute truth or absolute non-truth and everything in between in this layer of metaphorical layer of cellophane made up of words uh, that is arbitrary and it's up to you or what consists what the layer of cellophane is made up of it's not up to me it's up to you because you're observing me see now I could say the same thing for what if I want to describe what I'm doing now I could say there's a layer of cellophane that's exactly the same process so there you go <coughs> It's just a bit of a metaphor that I came up with today when I started thinking about truth and how words really <coughs> come in to create, they create a potential, I guess, for us to distort the truth. Maybe they allow us to express the truth, saying I am sitting, you know, but they give us the potential to, to say anything. That's our point. Whereas when you look at me, right, with your eyes, uh, unless your, I don't know, your sort of brain is constructed in a different way that it plays tricks on me or something. Um, you know, I'm hoping you're seeing what that I'm sitting here. I think most of you are. Hopefully. Yeah. So there you go. <coughs> Just a, a sort of a metaphor to look at words and truth and non-truth and perhaps how we observe things. Just an idea. There you go. Now I've got a really interesting book. I think I'm going to run out of time this week but I think next week uh, I'm going to read something out of this really interesting book I've just got out of the library and it's got the most interesting title I've ever seen in a book. Most poetic. Interesting title called Heavy Words Lightly Thrown, which is quite interesting, by Chris Roberts. Now, what that's pertaining to is, it's about um, fairy tales, and um, heavy words lightly thrown is getting to the point that the traditional meanings of fairy tales have been confused, subtly neutered, right, subdued, and they've changed during to changing cultural assumptions, right? so that uh, the original point has been lost, right? So they were heavy words in that um, originally they were pretty brutal actually and pretty straightforward to the point because they were meant to teach lessons and so forth, but they've been lightly thrown. Interesting title, eh? And um, that's just the title, so it shows you that the book itself is going to be really fascinating, and it is. And um, maybe Goosey Goosey Gander, that's a pretty interesting one actually. It's all about, oh, we'll find out next week. Thanks a lot, and uh, yeah, keep rating the videos and um, subscribing if you haven't yet. And what's the other thing? Old comments, yes. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next week. Bye.